since I started using Shopify, I always struggled with how limited I was when it comes to optimizing or modifying the product pages. Well, the good news is after Shopify Online Store 2.0, now things are way better. Now we can optimize our product pages and make them look perfect without the need to hire any web developer or any professional. Hi there, I am Rihab and on this YouTube channel I share with you videos related to e-commerce, entrepreneurship and more. And as I told you before, in this video I'm going to show you step by step how you can create your product page. But before starting with our topic, I want to invite you to sign up to the free workshop I'm currently offering. In this workshop, I show you step by step how you can create a sustainable, strong e-commerce business. I show you the exact framework that you should be applying to your business in order to be able to attract, convert, and most importantly, retain your customers. So if you are interested in creating a strong, sustainable e-commerce business, go down to the description and sign up to this free workshop. It's 100% free, so you don't need to pay anything. Whenever I want to create product pages for any store, the first thing I start with is to do a market research. I need to understand my potential customers. I need to understand what they are searching for and what kind of information they are interested about. Before buying the product, a customer must know everything about the product. So we must provide all the needed information inside of our product pages. And in order to know how our potential customers think and what they care about, I always go to my competitors' stores and do my market research. I also go to Amazon and see the reviews and read them because inside of the reviews, I will be able to understand my potential customers more. And I will know what kind of questions they have in mind, what kind of information they are interested about, and what kind of guides or maybe details they need before making the decision whether to buy the product or not. So I started with this. I went to Amazon, I read the reviews. Then I went to my competitors' stores and I saw what they are doing in there. And I collected information about what are the things that I will be including inside of my product page. This store, for example, sells wigs and hair extension bundles and accessories and stuff like that. So I needed to include inside of the product page everything my customers care about starting from the dimensions of the wigs, the length, for example, the density, also the cap dimensions, also a guide about how to wash the wig and how to take care of it, in addition to a list of frequently asked questions. So I did my best to include all the needed details inside of my product page because I want my potential customer to be able to find everything they are searching for inside of this page so they don't have any hesitation and they don't feel like they still need more information before making the decision to buy my product. In addition to that, while checking the competitors, I have found that multiple ones of them offer free returns and free shipping. So we decided that these are things that we need to offer in order to be able to compete with other stores. So we created a list of all our unique selling propositions and I created an illustration where I have included all our unique selling propositions. It's true that all of these information are there within our product descriptions and within our shipping conditions and stuff like that, but creating a visual illustration of our unique selling propositions make it way easier for our potential customers to understand and to absorb the information. I created this illustration using Canva and I made sure to brand it as per our brand colors and our brand font. After deciding what content we are going to include inside of our product page, we hired people from Upwork and Fiverr in order to create the infographics and maybe write the text and stuff like that. And when we had everything in place, I created the first product page template and now I'm going to show you how I did that. I'm using the symmetry theme as an example. So the options of this theme might be different than other themes. But for example, I can choose between including the description directly near of the photos or I can include it below the buy box. I have decided to include the description below the buy box, but I have added a small description inside of the buy box. And in order to include this small description, I have used a meta field because this description is going to be unique by product. Also, in order to include the specification of the product, I have used Shopify Meta Fields in order to have a unique specification tab per product. So here I am inside of my Shopify dashboard and from here I'm going to Online Store, Themes and I'm going to click on Customize. I will show you how to create a product page template 
but I will show you first the product page template I have created. So from here, you go to products and in here you can see all the templates. I've changed already the default product page template because this is the one we are going to use to almost all of our products. So this is how my product page looks like. First, I have the product photos from here. Then I have the buy box in here. I have the product title, the price, the uh, variants, because I have different variants. Then I have the buttons. I have the unique selling propositions in here. Then I have these tabs. Some of these tabs are common between all of my product pages and some of them are dynamic. This means that they are unique per product. So for example, the product description is a meta field. This means this tab is unique per product. Uh, when it comes to shipping and delivery, this tab is common between all of my products. When I scroll in here, when I scroll down, I have the description. This is the product description itself. Moving down, I have also this section where I have added my unique selling propositions. Down, I have the, this section about the cap sizes. Then I have this section about how to choose the correct length. Then I have more details about the cap. Then I have care guide, also another care guide. And finally, I have the frequently asked question section. Okay. If you want to create a page like this one, this is actually very simple. So as you can see in here, I have this first section, which is the product page section. Okay, in here I can see the characteristics of this product page. I can, for example, change the media size. I can change the position of the uh, photos, the thumbnails from here. I can enable stick on scroll or not. So for example, I can change the position of these photos to be in here, but I prefer them to be beside main page. Okay, so these options will differ depending on the theme you are using. Under this uh, section you will have all the blocks that they are a part of the product page so all of these are elements that exist in here okay starting from the title the price the vendor and so on most of these elements at the beginning are here by default because we need the title the price the variant picker and stuff like that but starting from here after the buttons these are elements that i have add myself so first i have the image and I have created this image on Canva, as I told you, and I have included this image in here. So simply in order to edit it, I have clicked on add block and I have added add an image like this. And I simply select my image and use it in here. Now let me remove this. Concerning the tabs, I did almost the same thing. So I went in here, clicked on add block. And this time, instead of adding an image, I added a collapsible tab like this. Okay, if I include the uh, content in here directly from the editor, this means that the content of this tab will be common between all the product pages that use the default product as a template. Okay, so for example, for the shipping, let me show you. For the shipping, the content is in here because this is a static tab common between all of my product pages. Now concerning, for example, the specifications or the description, this is different. I have used a meta field. So let me show you how you can create these tabs. In order to create a static tab, you just need to add a tab, add the content in here, maybe a link to a page, and this is it. However, if you want to create a tab that is dynamic, this means using meta fields, you click on add block, and this time you click on tab, but instead of writing the content in here, you remove everything from here. And instead of writing the text in here, you need to link to a meta field. I'm gonna save from here, go back to create my meta field to show you how to use it. So you go back in here, you go to settings, and from settings, you go to meta fields, and you need to create the, these meta fields. So for example, in here, I have the first meta field. Uh, this is the specifications. The other one is the product description. So let's say I want to make a, even the title of the tab dynamic so i click in here i name my meta feed let's say title from here i choose the content it's gonna be text and since it is a title it's gonna be a single line text and i'm going to click on save okay these two meta fields are also text but they are multi-line text because it's a paragraph so i'm going back to a random product from here to products
when I enter the product editor in here, you can see that I have new fields at the bottom of the product page of things that I can modify. So this is the meta field I have just created. It's the title. I can in here, for example, put the title of the tab. Let's say it's gonna be, for example, specifications or all specifications. So we can defer it. Here we have the specifications and the product descriptions. And those are also meta fields that I have created previously. And I clicked in here and entered the information. As you can see in here, I have the product specification. And in here I have a small description of the product. I'm gonna click on save. I will be back to my theme editor to show you how I can link to these elements. So going back in here, let, this is my tab. And in here, instead of writing the heading, I'm gonna choose a meta field and this time I'm going to choose the title and I will click on insert and I'm going to in here to click on insert dynamic source and I'm going to add the specifications so as you can see now I have a tab with the title all specifications and under it I have the product specifications okay now I can go to each of my products and I can change the title and change the content so this is a tab that is unique per product. Let me remove it. I have used meta fields to create both of these tabs, the specifications and the product descriptions. So when you click, for example, on product description from here, you can see that the heading is not dynamic, but the content is dynamic. I have linked to a meta field in here. Same for specifications. When I click on specifications in here, you can see that the heading is not dynamic, but the content is dynamic. I'm linking to a meta field. So I repeat the, the shipping and the exchange rate are static tabs where the specifications and the descriptions are dynamic tabs. Here I have the description. This is the main description, the one I have included inside of my product editor. So it is unique per product. Here I have my unique selling propositions. And as I told you before, I have created this image on Canva and I simply uploaded the image to my Shopify store and used it in here. So this is an image with text overlay section. I'm gonna recreate it so you know how I did it. You go in here, you click on add section and this time you click on image with overlay. I'm gonna move it up so you can see it directly below the one, below the right, the right one, so it's in here. This is the new section. I'm going to select my photo, which is this one. Now I need to remove the tint and the text. So I'm going to erase everything. And I'm going to remove the tint and make it with no background. I will also remove the text from here. So as you can see, I have now recreated the same section. That's how I have created it. I'm going to remove it. After the unique selling propositions, I have created the second section. And for this, I have used text columns with images. If you are using the Dante, for example, they have a section very similar to this one where you divide the screen in columns. So for example, in my case, I only needed two columns. So I included the first image and the second image. Below it, I have included this section to show my potential customers how to measure the hair length so as you can see in here i have a table and i have a uh, the instructions in here to make sure that they know exactly what they are purchasing after that i have uh, these infographics about the uh, the cap in order to give my potential customers more information and also for this section i have used the text columns section with images for this section for example i have used the section called image with text also, I guess it is available in the Dawn theme. It's very simple. You just edit, you replace the photo and you replace the text. Scrolling down, this is another section about how to take care of the wig. Also in here, I have added a section about tips to take care of wigs and more tips in here. And finally, I have included a frequently asked question section. This theme actually comes with a section for the frequently asked question uh, questions. So when you click here on add section, you can add a frequently asked question section i'm not sure this comes with all the themes but if it didn't you can simply create add a rich text and create questions with bullet points so 
So as you can see, you can add as much sections as you wish to product page. And maybe in the future, I will be adding a section to show photos of my customers wearing the wigs and maybe showing them in order to add social proof. After creating the product page template for wigs, I needed to create a new product page template for my other products since not all the information that I have included inside of my wig product page are relevant to other products. So I created a new template based on my previous templates and I simply removed the sections that they are not relevant. And then after that, I went to my products and I assigned the right template for each one of them. After creating this first product page template, I needed to create a second one. So from here, I went down, I clicked on products, and from here, instead of starting with a default product, I click on create template and I can create a new template. Okay, after creating all of your templates, you just need to go back to your product and assign the right template for each of your products. So you go back in here without saving for sure. And you go to products. Let's say this is my product. What you do is you scroll down in here and under online store, you choose the product page template, and this is it. So if you are selling different products, you need to create different product page templates for each of your product types, as I have done in here. I have the default product for all of my wigs, and I have created a template for my bundles because my potential customers need different information for the bundles than for the wigs. Since this is a new store, so until now we don't have reviews yet, but also at some point I will be adding a block in here for the reviews, for the ratings, and also down below for the reviews. So don't forget to add reviews inside of your product pages. They are extremely important for your social proof and for convincing people to buy from you. Because I know that many of you will be using the DOM theme for their stores, since it is a free theme provided by Shopify, I wanted to go to a DOM theme store and show you the different sections that you can add inside of your product page in order to create something similar to what I have created for my client. So here I am inside of my DOM theme and I'm changing my default product page. When I click here on add section, I can see the different section types that I can add. So maybe I can use image banner. This is one option if I want to add a very big image. Or maybe you can use, for example, uh, image with text if you want to create something similar, for example, to this one in here, to this section in here. Or I can use the multi-column section in order to add multiple images one after the other. So let me click in here to find this section. And as you can see, when I click on each of these columns, I can change the content. So I can select an image and I can change the text or I can even remove it. Okay, so this is also a good section that you can use in order to create something similar to, for example, to this section in here. Thank you for watching this video and for staying up until the end. I truly appreciate that. Before leaving, I want to invite you one last time to sign up to the free workshop I'm currently offering. Remember, in this workshop, I show you step by step how you can create a sustainable, strong e-commerce business. You will find the link below in the description. This workshop is 100% free, so you don't need to pay any dollar. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and before leaving, don't forget to smash the like button, to subscribe to my channel and to hit the notification bell because in this way you will get notified each time I publish a new video. See you next week. Bye bye.